Hi, my name is Trevi. And I'm Kate. And welcome back <laughs> to our <laughs> podcast called Six, Six Feet, Feet Above. Oh my we were god. Having I hate some my hair. We were having some technical difficulties. I didn't have time to style it, so Trevi was styling it, and now I think it looks like I... Wait, no, it looks good. Okay, we're just gonna deal with that. Um, hey. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Um, how was your week? It was so good. Um, I graduated improv. Eee! And that you did. I did. And Trevi and the squad pulled up and watched me. And it really meant a lot that you came. You know real. what? I would have done it anytime. <laughs> I was more than happy to come. I yeah. mean, like, my favorite thing ever to do is see Kate in her element, like, doing her own things. I'm like slowly announcing <laughs> yeah. that like I'm bringing in another host. No, I'm kidding. No, I love to see you shine on your own. Which is hash. Uh, clock, ah! clock that good friendship right there. Clock it. Yeah, clock it. Because a lot of you bitches can't relate. Why don't Why don't you? Okay. So why don't we're do, not going to start with me yelling at no, people? No, That's I do. Crazy. I really want to start some beef today. <laughs> That's like actually what I want to do. But no, it means a lot, and you just we want to see each other thrive, and that's that. Um. And nothing's actually ever been more real than that. Right. Um, clock this rose, so by cute. the way. But yeah, no, I wore this in a grid post, so clock that. So don't call her out for it. Well, I'll just lie and be like, we filmed it the day, three weeks ago. Right. Like that time we lied about. The time, well, we. <laughs> NBC, The time yeah. you lied. Did, wait, did they? Did yeah, they launch no, it? They didn't launch it yet. Oh, you, you have Google Alerts? No, I just haven't paid attention. Or maybe just didn't catch my eye because I wasn't on the segment. But you guys are a part of this too. Yeah. So if we see a story from NBC. About celibacy. And just know I was supposed to be on it. But then I told them I was lying to their faces. Right. And then they took me off it. And you had integrity with that. Yeah, like that's yeah. a crime. Clock that. Yeah, like let's have a segment on honesty. Let's have a segment. Again, a lot of you bitches can't relate. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Guys, before we continue this episode, we just wanted to remind you it would mean so much to us if you could like this video and comment something down below. That tells YouTube to push our videos into the algorithm and find more people that are like you guys that would enjoy us. So we would really, really, really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't subscribed and click the notification bell, we would love that. You guys would know every time we uploaded if you click those buttons. So don't miss out. Guys, if you are watching this while driving or trying to fall asleep, we have an audio version. Head on over to the description to listen to that if you need to. My week has been, well, first of all, right. uh, well, <laughs> today it is August. Hello, it's September 3rd. Right. We last filmed... Like two minutes like ago. Like two minutes ago. It's a Tuesday. Usually we film on Fridays. Yes. So feels as... <laughs> Stop I'm laughing at me. I just feel like I need a moment to breathe. But mm -hmm. in 10 hours, I am going to be on a flight to New York. So... Hello. We... I have not done that runway that I talked about last episode. Mm -hmm. I would be doing it in a couple days from today. But by the time this is out, I would have already done it. <gasps> So, Rotten. so if that's out, peep the IG. Yay, leave peep a the IG. Yeah. So, and then we'll talk about it in the next step. Um, Can't wait. But yeah, I guess I'm currently in New York as you're watching this, and I'm my jealous. week is going. Yeah, my week's going fab. I'm in New York right now you're for Fashion Week. You're literally a model. Yeah. I imagine if you like asked me like, or we started asking each other how our weeks are, and we like answered it as of like what we think our week would have been like by the time the episode okay because i want to start lying i think you need to yeah because I you would have been on nbc <laughs> yeah i know i would have been in new york yes so, yeah. the concrete jungle where yes. dreams are made of yes. yeah i don't know i think things have been good got finally got my nails done oh i finally got my nails done i told the dude i said i want it to look like pinky nudish pearl and uh, do I have what it seems to almost be chunky glitter on my nails for Fashion Week? Yes. It's so cute. Am I a 12-year-old girl? Yes. No. Oh, well, right. no. Mm -hmm. um, will it sparkle with the paparazzi flashes? Probably. <sighs> You're welcome. Is the designer probably going to make me take him off and put on a nude? That is literally what I don't miss about modeling. I don't. I hope not. 
but I will clock that. Yeah, the, it's ridiculous. Like you could never have any fancy nails in your modeling. They always have to be polished nude. Well, if it becomes that case, I could boring. Do, if it becomes that case, I could do a nude over it. Like I do a white. Yeah. Cure it and then. Do or you a, tell them to get the f- over it and well, remind I, them who the f- you are. I I. <laughs> Well, yes. Um, yeah, I still haven't packed yet, though. Oh, good. And your flight's what? 6 a.m.? Yep. Mm. So just get into that. I kind of love that. But, hey, a lot like... <laughs> <laughs> well, hold up. A lot like clocking it. Mm. You could also be clocking in. And you know what that means? It's time to work. But is all work the same? No. <laughs> did, you, did you just realize where I was going? I was like, what? Is all work the same? No. No. Do we judge that? No. No. <laughs> you go, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Got that. Today we wanted to get into the topic of S-E-X work. Hello. Um, and honestly, umbrellaing under that, like the O to the F of it all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we just wanted to discuss it, discuss the stoigma, discuss a lot of comments we get. So me personally and Trevi gets these a lot as well. I post a risque pic here and there. And by that, I mean almost every post. Right. And I love that. And I'll get a lot of comments that are like, Just make an OF. Just make an OF. And then under those comments, they'll get I'll get a comment from another man who, guess what, didn't ask for your opinion, saying like, no, that's going to ruin her. Then I'll have no respect for her. And then they're just like fighting in my comments about whether or not I should make an OF. And it's like, hey, do I get a say in this, first of all? Right. Guess not. Guess not. B, it's so it's so weird that like. Oh, it makes me so mad because so with O to the F, women have and other people have so much agency over their bodies. And that's what makes a lot of people mad because it's on their own terms. And also Mm -hmm. the stigma of it, the slut shaming of it all, Mm -hmm. which I really want to get into. Mm -hmm. What are your views on the matter? Well, I've come close to doing that. I never, and even if I were to do it, I don't think I ever had an intention of actually actually getting naked. Mm -hmm. I just think it was like a fun idea of like, oh, this could make me a lot of money. And then I like realized that like, personally with the career path that I want to go down, it's giving digital footprint. Like regardless of what I post on there or not, people are going to assume that I am doing PORN. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just the look for me that I personally don't want. I have a lot of friends that do it. So my best friends do it. Um, and clock that. They make money. And it's everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what I find so interesting is these dudes that are commenting these things on our posts. And I'm like getting DMs too that are like, you would be so good if you just like stripped down. on I'm right. like, but then it's like, it's those, it's just so wild because... In the, like, real world, or not the real world, but, like, on, like, dating apps or or even just talking to guys that you meet out, Mm -hmm. and I tell them what I do for work. Mm -hmm. You know, I say I make content on the internet. I've been doing it for the past 15 years. I make music. And then they, like, immediately jump to the question of, oh, don't tell me you do OF. And I'm like, first of all, buddy. Your MasterCard would be out. Yeah, you'd be the first to subscribe. You'd be the first to swipe. Yeah. Second of all, it's like the same dudes that are saying that are the same dudes swiping for other bitches. Absolutely. So it's like Absolutely. If you if you have have you ever generated a original opinion ever? Right. No. No. Um, it's just very double standard boots because it's like, oh, you want to get your nut on your computer alone and these women that do these performances, these exotic performances for you, they're great for you. You love right. it, you know? Right. But if one of those women, you came across them in real life, what, do you get what I'm kind of saying? Like, it's Well, just- yeah, the problem is when people specifically, it's like, I'm going to come across as a man hater. I'm not. But when men find out that women do SEX work, do O to the F, they immediately, a lot of men immediately stop viewing them as human. They immediately, immediately view them as objects, whole. as a whole, 
And that is the issue at hand because they are most of the time the consumers and then they just the lack of respect is so real. Can I be vulnerable for a second? Yeah. And this is like sad because this is maybe like how I view society and this like potentially could be only my experience. You said, you know, as soon as people start doing um, like risky content, like OF or like are a part of some sort of sex work moment, that's when they get viewed at viewed as like an object. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I don't do any of that. And oh, I'm yeah. over here like, right. I, I'm like, is it, is it that? Is that the truth? Because well, I'm like, at yeah. this point, I'm like, I have found people that are intrigued by who I am or, you know, find my personality amazing and whatnot. And they want to get to know me. But it's like, oh, I'm like, it's just like under all of that. It's like, I know all you're thinking about is like, Oh, 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 oh. Well, yeah, I and definitely like they're wasn't just behaving themselves. Yeah, I wasn't saying that if you don't do SEX work, you're not going to be viewed as an object. Like most of us are viewed as an object, and we don't d get the respect we deserve. But I'm just saying, like, usually when you find out that someone does SEX work, someone with minimal intelligence will immediately just like view you as far less than because. Can we do a segment called minimal intelligence? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we just read awful comments from men. Like the com and listen. Did we so just, I just birth a new segment? Minimal, minimal intelligence. <gasps> we read like DMs. We get yes. Do what? you have one right now? Because I have one on lock. That's I, crazy. I, probably. Okay. Um. But anyways, I don't think I do O to the F, just for like my own personal reason, and um, also like. I don't believe the stigma at all, but it's still something that it hurts. It's still there. I right. don't want that used against me, which is so messed up. Yeah. Like you should be able to do whatever the fuck you do with your body and nobody should be able to, to, clock have, that. to clock that. But unfortunately, it's like so prevalent, especially yeah. in L.A. In L.A., yeah. I don't know. It is very much a double standard at what point in your minimal intelligence <laughs> are you going to come to the conclusion using context clues that you're a hypocrite right totally. you know i um it makes me think of something that happened in college i was talking to this football player and well, that was your first clock that yeah, yeah clock it was that. like so we all know the double standards there about like you know going home with a guy yeah like, can we get just get into to yeah, yeah, DS, DS, double, double standards. Standard. Yeah, and I was talking to this guy, and we were in like a group of people, and he said so matter of factly, I'll never forget it. And let me remind you, minimal intelligence. He goes, <laughs> "Yeah, if a girl goes home with a guy, she's a whore." And then the football players around him were like, "Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah." <laughs> and then I he literally, and I remember being like, "Well, what about the guy?" And he was like. Well, no, that's what we're supposed to do. Like, so, like, wow. he was like, it is a fact. And I was like, oh, you're lost. Well, no, they're just hardwired. You're so lost. Yeah. And um, they're lost in, in their hardwiring. And that is that. that is maximum intelligence of, on my end. No, because. Because clock that. Yes. Because <laughs> clock that. Because unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> unfortunately. Right. <laughs> A lot of these situations where men say things like that, mm -hmm. and not even in that area. It could be anything down to politics or religion or anything in even just trans hating shit, like whatever world is relevant to me. It is their hardwiring. Yeah. Like a lot of people are a product of their parents or and or grandparents. Right. I know. And like it was just there were so many of those moments, especially in college, where you'd hear the double standard. Like, I remember another time this guy was like, if a woman's body count is above eight, I would never wife her. Mind you, what are you bringing to the table, sir? Not much. Minimal. But Of intelligence. I remember my friend was like, dude, that, like, really messed me up because, like, my body count's, like, 12 and, like, all this stuff. The body count shit? Oh, don't get me started. Right. The double standard of that. And right. I remember being like... What do you mean? What if you really like the girl? And like, what if her like body count is 10 or something like that? And he was like, girls should just like get a dildo and like never like 
TikTok again. And when it comes to those people that say those things about like the body count and going home with a guy, it makes you a whore. I'm at a point in my life where I'm like, oh, I don't, I can't even like respond to you. I don't, I can't. I can't even like, mm -hmm. I, I just laugh. I'm like, that's hilarious. But I'm like, so you're in college. Right. <laughs> right. So you, And it's you, like, why are you a minor in college? No, like, why are you, you haven't showed up to a single class. Somehow you're 30. You're still a freshman. <laughs> what is this scenario? You're showing up to every frat party. <laughs> right. Blacking out, showing up with Smirnoff. Are you, are you an offspring of uh, right. <laughs> of the humankind, or are we like in chimpanzee yeah. territory? No, it is. It's, are y'all yeah. like <laughs> that? It's child's play. It's chi It's it's not. It's minimal. And I'm so sick of hearing like women. Um, they mature at age 25, and men mature at age 40. I call bull shite. That's just an excuse for men to be stupid. I'm sorry. What do you mean 40? What do you mean? Looks like I got 14 more years. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh! No, God, I'm funny. Seriously. Um, I just don't know. I mean, <laughs> look. <laughs> we're befuddled. We're be uh, befuddled, bemuddled yeah. in the puddle. Don't worry about anyone slut shaming you. Do whatever the fuck you want as long as yeah. it makes you feel good. Well, but isn't there like, the, like I was watching Love Island and like they were playing this game of like what the average body count of a woman is. And it and was what like, is it? way lower than what I thought it was. It was like men in their 20s saw seven or more partners being too high for a woman. Like so it's like I mean maybe this is like based off of like their opinion because everything is but. Um, <laughs> I feel like three times on this podcast I've been like I only have sex once a year. What do you mean? Like I say I have intercourse and then I'm like. And I only do it once a year. But it's like, how many times am I going to say that? Right. <laughs> clock it. Do you, cause clock, but when cause you think about that, it, a month is a year. Do you mean like with... Because I really don't have SEX a lot at all. But if I did, wouldn't change how you view me, right? Don't care, even if it would. Right. So clock this <laughs> KISS sponsorship. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like... <laughs> My mom taught me not to talk with my mouth open. Another double standard when you think about it. Uh, true. It's like, why is pieces of your burger flying into my eye? Like, actually. <laughs> I'm like. And why are your like elbows on the table? Your ooh, face is in the plate. The piece of the burger and then your spit meeting together <laughs> halfway to New York, crashing <laughs> into like Texas. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying though? I do. Because get into that. Please. Um, and la last thing I'll say about this whole like little conversation, which is hardly one. Yeah, um, <laughs> like, don't know what just happened. Um, I feel like when I tell people that I'm meeting, what I do this is what I kind of was trying to get into earlier. Is like when I say I do like I don't ever say like I do social media because like I don't do social media. I feel like I'm more of a businesswoman in the sense of the way I approach my partnerships and like. Me and you are more so, like, entertainment-leaning, mm -hmm. and we use social media as, like, a, v a vehicle to right. get us to where we want to be. Yeah. Um, But then as soon as I say that, and, and then as soon as, obviously, they know I'm trans, because I, that's an opener for me. I'm like, I'm not wasting no time. I mm -hmm. tell people, so get into that. And don't clock that, because you don't need to clock that, because I've already told you. Right. And I'm also unclockable today. <laughs> um, But... There's a lot of trans women. I mean, e even back in the day, too, it's less now, but it's obviously not a bad thing. But there's a lot of trans women that do s a sex work um, and or oh, or if or you could add, oh. I, we can add an art accent. Yeah. Yeah. So YouTube doesn't demonetize. Um, and it's not that I hate that people's uh, like assumptions go straight to there, but it's like you. You think because I'm fucking tranny that God forbid I could do anything solid or anything to make a difference in this world or strive for bigger and better fucking dreams than fucking flashing my pussy on camera. Like, holy shit. The assumption is crazy. The assumption's crazy. Yeah. And then when I say no, they're like, oh, thank God. I'm like, I'm like, shut up. Yeah, what? Fucks me anyway. Right. Right. 
I just not uh, that I would one of you two. Uh, no, you wouldn't have. And I just I just hate I hate the oh thank God because I'm like, it's like okay so you like we're having such a good time together and then you would have immediately been like oh I view you as less of a person. Yeah, crazy or, or maybe not even one. Right, right. I'm gonna make a quick little plug here, real quick. Sorry to interrupt the episode again, but. I applied to be part of the Sephora squad, and that would be epic if I made that cut. That basically means that if I make it, I'd be working with Sephora for like a year or something, and I've always wanted to work with them. If you could fill out the little testimonial thing that I put down in the description and kind of let them know what you think of me and why I'd be fit for the job, I would really, really appreciate it because I've always wanted to work with them. And I love you guys, and thank you for doing that. I've been watching this documentary on HBO, which you should get into, and y'all should get into. This is not sponsored. Called Chimp Crazy. Oh. Get into this lore. Okay. Bri, have you watched it? No. Okay, so it's a brand new series on HBO. It's made by the same director of Tiger King. So literally like Tiger King, picture that. But it's all about like this head person who like runs like a whole chimp breeding what? facility like illegal type boots PETA lawsuits like them like stealing their monkeys back from PETA and like hiding out into the it's wild and it's oh like these God. like I don't know I feel like it's like different because like a tiger it's like you got them like they had them on like leashes and like the ti- these are like Two times bigger than a human being. Oh my goodness. And they're walking. Like it's like they're chimpanzees. Wow. And then it like goes into lore of like the attacks that happen, that they have to like hide to like make sure that they get to keep their animals. Oh. It is wild. I don't know. I because when I was doing the <laughs> right. it had me thinking about it. Yo, chimps are it's so crazy they exist. Just the way that they will like one minute be like I love you. You raised me as your own son, even though I was supposed to be in the wild. Right. And then one day when I turn like 16, I'm going to f*** it at your good face. Yeah. Off. Then they turn on you. Hey. It's like half these bitches. And they don't even got to be f***ing chimps. Hello. <sighs> bah. And chimps. And a lot. They... Yeah, segue. <laughs> segue from chimps. Chimps. Come on. Have chess. Ooh. And I bet if those chimps could talk, they'd have a lot to say. And they'd have a lot to get off their chest. I thought you were going to rhyme. Mm. Mm. Sorry. They'd have a lot to say. They have a lot to say. A male on male chimp, we call that kind of fucking gay. (laughs) And do we judge? No, we don't. No, we don't. And so, (laughs) having said that... It's been a week, and we have some things to get off our chest, because guess what? We didn't forget it this time. So welcome to the next segment called Off Our Chest, Damn right. where we vent about something that annoyed us, that we're excited about, just like anything we just need to get off our yitties. Mm-hmm. So. Take it away. Okay. Off my chest this week is, so, as you know, I've been doing stand-up, going to open mics, and it's been great. Um... It's been cool. Um, so <laughs> it's like what? it's wildly humbling. Um, to another open mic last night, uh-huh. and it was like the biggest open mic I've been to. It was like I think like fifteen people, which oh, is a lot. No, that's for a me. lot. Uh, that, yeah. Um, and I got up there and I had to tie my sweatshirt around my waist because my post legit sweating well yeah and god forbid you wear underwear um, literally mm-hmm. well why would i do that no, and um, why would you? <laughs> but this girl before me gets on stage and she goes how long's my pussy hair and then points to the crowd <laughs> it. it was so good you're like and that's how i met harper rose <laughs> no, literally i forget her name she was so funny and then she was like yeah i got a bush and i was like oh hell yeah and then no. she was like i was like me too and then she was like but I'm going to shave it because, you know, dress for the job you want. And I was like, she was like, I'm trying to get laid soon. I was like, this? St- like, open mics are what I've been yearning for my whole life. Really? Like, these are my people. Take me. I just want to come I want see you. you to come. Should I do so a set? Bad. Yes. But I don't know how to be funny on command. You ju- First of all, 
don't ever disrespect me like that again because <laughs> after the improv show, we all went out to um, lunch together and Harper Rose have been talking, has been talking about your quick wit since that lunch. Wanted to tell you that. Uh -oh. You're insanely witty and I, one, something I've noticed about you is oh. that you're so witty and when you're in a group of people, somehow you become like even wittier. <sighs> Which is so insane because usually it's the opposite. Attention whore, yes. Right, but like <laughs> when I'm in a group of people, I feel like that's when I like, you know, become a little lax. But yeah. you just like amp it up and I'm like, you're a stand up. I want to. So come with me. Okay. When I'm back from New York. But I mean it because I, I told you I'd do the improv with you, but I let you write that out. <sighs> I, I gave know. you relief. I showed up to the graduation. I ruined it all. Because no, literally, you got up on stage. And I you did. You upstaged us. Yeah, no, I yeah. did not do that. No, but did but. You, wait, but also, did you see that guy? <laughs> like, Everyone thinks that I had a crush on a short, bald man in my improv. Yeah, group. and you fucked him. I did not, Kim, directly. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was indirect. All oh, right. So I'm going to literally stop talking and yeah. hit it. So... I was editing the podcast. Why? Uh, <laughs> did you say why? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't yeah. trust anyone else to edit it. But Because actually. Because clock that. Because it's like you could give me all the budget in the world. I still would have to like miserably sit there and go through like right, an hour yeah. and a half of footage. Gabby asked why we don't pay an editor. And I was like, because we're so particular. Yeah. Right? I'm like every breath, every um. And yes, I could tell someone to do that. But they don't know what I would want mm -hmm. to keep in and, and take out called being businesswoman look it up well and it's like what if i don't like the way like a certain part is and like i like sometimes before on this podcast i've had to like rework a sentence if it didn't make sense mm -hmm. and like okay sorry i did movie magic on a podcast but like there's just like little things that i feel like i'm so particular about as are you which is why like right. it's just perfect that we do half and half. It's the best. But anyway, so we were editing. I was editing mm -hmm. the second draft uh, at Tana's house while she was gone. And I was with Ashley, our friend Ashley Schwan. Love. Love her. And she had to edit a vlog too. So we're like, oh my God, we need to have an editing party. Cute. Okay. And it was a Gorgiana day. In Tana's backyard, there's like a super cute little shaded area mm -hmm. with like chairs and not a table. And we're like, check this one out. We should get a table down here so me and you can edit outside on this beautiful day. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. Right. The inside of the house, it just wasn't giving. Mm. We really wanted to, you know, spread right. our wings outside artistically, right. as one might say. She goes, oh my God, there's a great table that's on the roof. Keep in mind, Tana's house is 17 stories tall. Oh, my God. Um, maybe 19. Probably. 1738. Yeah. Yeah, yeah baby. Um, and I'm like, oh, so check this, clock this one out. I'm not going to walk that table down. Right. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that at all. And I go, well, Ashley, what is your best idea? Now, mind you, overlooking the roof is the pool area. She goes, Shut the fuck. We are going to launch this $700 extendo collapsible table off the top floor of this house, and it's going to land in the pool. And someone's going to jump in and get it, and we're going to edit. And I go, You know what? Girl. I don't think that's a solid plan, but I trust. You? No one. <laughs> I trust not a soul. And honestly, at that point, I knew it was not going to end up well. Right. Um, yeah, spoiler, it didn't end up well. I have content to show you. Oh I'll insert God. the video right here, and I'll show Kate as I put up the video. But we launch, and it's not a small <laughs> table, y'all. Like it's, It was like a $700, like you could like extend it it's like for like families to eat outside like i shut up i thought she wanted to throw off like one of those like you know right the common gray with the two metal legs that you play beer cup yeah. beer pong on yeah thought it was one of those right honey it was giving like restoration hardware outdoor girl. like and i'm just like girl Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Did it break? <laughs> Into 20,000 pieces. I can't get it. Into 20... Thousand pieces. Wait, wait, listen. Oh. Wait, wait, check, clock this. Get into this double collision, double clank. <laughs> Do you have a picture of it broken? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> so, the the bump, bump. That is it insane. hit like a part of the like, <laughs> like it hit another story on the way. Oh, down. luckily no tile broke. Oh, nothing thank God. broke. I don't even know like what emotion that off my chest lies me in. I think I just really wanted to share. I was trying to have a wholesome moment. It, that was wholesome. And it's smart. It's like giving women in STEM. It, it's giving, it's, it's, it would have been giving women in STEM if I studied physics. Right. But girl, 20,000 pieces. And then she was sitting there outside for, Two hours easily trying to super glue it back together so we could. Stop. And I'm like, I'm done. Just with, give it up. No, I'm like already yeah. done ed editing right, the episode. Right. So a lot like chests. Okay. Um, the chest is a body part. It is. And you know what else is a body part? Tell me right now. The brain. And what the brain consists of most of the time is a significant amount of intelligence if you're someone like Trevi or Kate. Right. Um, but as referenced earlier in this episode, we mentioned people of minimal intelligence and mm. that being men in our DMs. Yeah. So I guess as of today, new segment alert. Hey! Tell, us you like tell us if you yeah, like it. Tell us if you like it. Yeah. Tell us if you like it. Find a DM or a DM of the week. Or a comment. Maybe. Or a comment. Um, that... Approaches us in a very minimalistic, intelligentistic way. That was intelligentistic, yeah. Intelli uh. <laughs> intelligentistic <laughs> right. statistics of this logistic. Yeah. So because between you and me, we get a fair amount of DMs, and but there's always like one that kind of sticks out. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we really want to share that. Yeah. While we're waiting to find a DM, I do want to read a comment I got, mm -hmm. which was. A comment I received recently was, Jesus, Kate needs to queef into my CPAP machine. At the <laughs> what? Oh, actually, don't worry. It gets worse. At the very least, freeze her discharge into an icicle and stab me with it. Okay, you're horny now. No, because I'm actually dripping. <laughs> Wait, can she queef into my CPAP machine? And it's like an old man in the little icon <sighs> thing. Queef <sighs> into my CPAP machine. I got disturbed by the discharge being in, in an That's a form. lot. Yeah. That's a lot. It was a lot to digest. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to bother you, but I was watching a video of a little boy on America's Got Talent or The X Factor, and down below the video, it said you, and it took me to you. Wow. Is that a question or yeah, a statement? That was like- Sabrina. Nice, I guess. Sorry to bother you. Okay. This is the most disturbing comment I've ever gotten, and it actually plummeted my self-confidence. Every time I see Kate, I can't help myself thinking... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay. This comment really disturbed me. Every time I see Kate, I can't help myself thinking that how big of a dump she must be taking. <laughs> oh, what the... F Every morning, given her huge size, sad face... <laughs> kidding me like, Wait, where was that's that? the worst thing that's ever happened to me where is that commented on on my youtube <laughs> that is stop bad that is bad but that is on mean. that same vein i really wanted to share this dm okay you ready for this dm oh wait check this one out okay, go. this is a dm on instagram from a fucking stranger the last time i was in new york okay never heard of this person dms me I got a big cock and <laughs> I got a big cock and two balls filled with lots of cum for you after <laughs> after this workout in West Village. Let me know. Hey, sure. Hey, <laughs> give me the address. No. <laughs> what does he think you're gonna do? You did it, right? <laughs> Hello. I'm expecting. Ding, first ever trans woman pregnant. Hello. Hey, I got a big <laughs> cock and two balls full of cum. 
waiting for you oh, after this perfect. workout in West Village. Let me know. Sent me. Right. So he also just told you that he's not going to shower after the workout. Wow. The milk emoji next to the word cum is Insane. also kind of. But also like, thank you for painting the picture. Like, painting. Very When you're trying to paint. <laughs> <laughs> So you you want to go for another one? Um, okay, so I like is, this segment. Me by too. The way. I'm having a lot of fun. Okay, this is a DM I got from a man. I just want to explore your intense sexual and unconventional energy. Okay, right. Love clock that. Something about you makes me want to explore you in every way. Um, okay, I want to hold you from behind and oh. feel your poof on my face. Oh, and feel your what? <laughs> I want to hold you from behind and feel your poop on my cock while I kiss the back of your sensual, soft, warm neck and massage your chest ever so slowly as if you are releasing centuries-long ache from your body. <laughs> A romantic man. No. <laughs> so. So you did it. Of course. Where was that left on? <laughs> My Instagram. Like he did me. <laughs> okay, I gotta find one to match you now. You better stop now because you're you're upping me. Oh, I'm locked and loaded, baby. I want to stick my <laughs> dick in your ass, then in your mouth, to make you taste your asshole. You f nasty f faggot. <laughs> Oh God! What? People Go are, to jail. No, because people are being romantic to yeah. you, and they're like, "You should taste your own asshole, you nasty fat." <laughs> like, where where did romance go for me? Because I want to on someone's dick. Right. That's. I'm sorry that I got the romance in that moment. What let me let hell? me try to find a good romance one. For okay, me. this was like kind of rude. This guy goes. What up? I know you be buying followers. You still bad though. What's up? No, I'm not. How dare you? Who said I'd rather that? have poop Just on the Just because you grew so quick? You put the man and woman slay king. Wow. <laughs> Fuck you, loser. Why are yours so nice? <laughs> like they're creepy, <laughs> they're but they're nice. You get some nice ones. Wow, this is really nice. A guy goes, let me eat your ass for 5k. Damn. All right. Well, that was the first edition of Minimal Intelligence. Um, and, I'm, and am I saying that if you have a specific kink, you have minimal intelligence? No. No. But I just really like the way that that name sounds for this segment. Uh, speaking of ass, sometimes we shake it. Yeah. And sometimes we shake it all night long at the club. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the club is a dark place. Ooh. And we want to talk about clubbing, New York versus L.A., what's happened to clubbing, and shit that's gone down in the club and out of the club, in, after, in the afters. That was a umbrella, if I've ever heard of one. I, I'm just trying to, you know. No, I loved rounds. it. I loved okay, it. Yeah. Beyond. So, clubbing. Well, so why don't we just set the ground, okay, like yeah. the base here. Clubbing is not what it fucking used to be. Okay, May and right. it, that's not because I'm sober. It's obviously a, he took a huge turn after COVID. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was this era where I feel like it was such a pop culture swing and a hit. Like just those photos of like the Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan. Right. Like, it was Sloshed. just such an well, yes, me five minutes ago. Right, same. Um, what? but <laughs> but it's like. I went to a club recently and I haven't been going to them often. I'm normally just a bar or a lounge girl type Love of a lounge. now. Um, but it's like, oh my good lord. Am I now 30 or is everyone girl. now 12? No, because I'm 40. Because, I mean, I, te I technically started going to clubs when I was like 16. Right. $20 bill under the credit card and they think it's a... They, yeah. they go, oh wow, you are definitely 21. Right. Takes 20. Right. That's LA for you. Um, you I just, titties? yeah, exactly. I just feel like even sober, like they used to be so much more fun. Like there just used to be like genuine, like dancing and like no phones and like right. not me being like, Oh, I like, throw your phones away. But it's like, 
everything is a bit for social media now. Right. Everything's an Instagram story. You see these big faces when they put their phones down. It's like, I'm with Marissa. Yeah. And then they put their phone down. Their face goes like this. I know. And they and, like shove Marissa. Yes. Yeah, no, Marissa's now got knocked kicked out. out yeah. No, Marissa's now. KO'd. No, Marissa's now in a K-hole. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Very that. Very that. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. Is It just seems super weird now. And maybe it's just because my eyes are opening. Has it always been like that? Yeah. I've said this before, and I would because this is the last time that I was in a club. I told my friend that I was with, I go, could you imagine if fucking lights were on in this goddamn place oh, and God. they had the music off, but only we could view it that way? Like, I, I want to see what the room would look like. You dry right up. No, but like, I'd want to see what the room would look like fully lit. Yeah. Stains on couches. Right. People's makeup everywhere. The, the way they're talking, the way they're slurring, the way that like right. everyone's like just like z- zombified. It's animalistic. Zom- zombified and animalistic. Yeah. But like silence. Like I only want to hear people's voices. Like imagine how sad it would look like and no shade to crack houses. Actually, shade to crack houses if you need help. Right. Yeah. yeah. But casual crack house. Okay. <laughs> okay. But like. If we could view it through that lens, talk about spooky boots. Girl, I feel that way when I walk into a club sober. I'm just like walking around and like everybody is just sweating. They're like farting and they're trying to get laid. Like that's what a club is to me. But why is that also the Grove? (laughs) (laughs) But I like know that they're farting. At Air One. (laughs) No, at the club. No, I know, I know. I'm just like trying to but at air one too. Yo, because it's like it's how just like, yeah. the probiotics and the Haley right. Bieber smoothie be like making you too. Yeah, and then you go to the club and you're trying to get laid. And I literally remember one time, it was like in the beginning of my sobriety, I saw I was going to the club and I saw a bunch of guys outside of the club and they all dap each other up and they go, All right, bros, let's get some pussy. And I was like, Oh, oh God. And it's I'd never been so dry in my life. And that but hey, it's okay for them. Right. It's okay for they them. They dap each other up. It's like a whole... Yeah, I'm taking this fucking whore home. Right. Yeah, she's never going to fucking hear from me again. And I, uh-huh. hey, in the beginning of my transition, I fell victim to this. We I've, all I, I've, I've, I went home with a guy or two. That you know dapped someone up early in the night and was like, I'm going to get some pussy. Well, but did he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did he? In the sense that... I should... Brie, can you turn my mic off? Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I'm going to <laughs> that's literally what he you're, sounded I'm like. like you i was like no you're not you're you're fucking you're, couch tonight I, well what first of all somehow i'm in you <laughs> i'm like how did we right. get there how did we get there Oh, but clubbing is so crazy because I remember the first time I went to the club, it was in New York. And this guy, I was at a bar. This guy came up to me and he was like, hey, free bottles and uh, free table. Just come to the club. And I remember being like, oh, this is a scam. I'm about to get kidnapped. But I was like, okay, I'll do it anyways. So I go to the club with him. I get free bottles, a free table. And I remember thinking I was like Beyonce. I was like, I can't believe. Why isn't everyone at the club? You're getting free bottles and free tables. They are. And now, literally. <laughs> and I went back. Like I was a club rat. Like, it's embarrassing. I went back really? every so was night. I, I was so like, was this I. is the best thing ever. It's free. But then you find out why it's, why it's free. Oh, yeah. They get you drunk for people to right. have sex with you. Right, yeah. yeah no, especially it, the rich older men that bought the table. Correct. Yeah. And the promoter gets, like, $50 per girl. Yes. And I remember being like, oh, my God. Can I bring a girl tonight to the promoter? And he was like... Yeah. And I was like all nervous to ask him. Like, I had no type of training when it came to clubbing. I was such a bozo. Um, did you ever after the club end up in an after situation which like could have gone horrible? Yeah. Cool. It did go horrible. Well, one time I think we talked about this. Could get into a party, so I tried sneaking in and it was like a ten foot fence and I climbed the fence. And I was so blacked out that once I was at the top of the fence, instead of, you know, hopping down onto my feet, Mm. I fell backwards and bounced off a trash can, hit the floor, and immediately started, you know, snoring. Holy shit. Good night, good night, moon. And then I woke up. (laughs) I made it. And then I went into the party. And then I probably did a lot of drugs that I didn't know what 
They were. Oh, you know, yeah, you have to after you knock out. Yep. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's scary. Could what about you? Um, one time I was at the club and I saw an old man at the club and I was like, I want to get a drink from the bar, but they're $30, so let me turn on the charm. So right. I like, go up to him and I was like, Zhuzhin, he buys me a drink and then he's like, yo, want to go on this boat? And I was like, what? Yeah. So I bring my friend and we're like walking to the dock and we're like, damn, we might die right now. That's kind of crazy. What time was it at? It, like 3 a.m. Mm. And um, I, I was like the next day. No, literally. And so we get on the boat and it's like a blast. And it's just a bunch of like older dudes and some older women. And then like us were what, 20? But I did a major party foul and I storied myself on the boat with a bunch of older dudes. And I was like, yo! And the next morning, all at least we were like, you got to delete that. It does not look good on your part. So party foul. Whoa. Yeah. And it you was like an old good ass man. Like, like looks like you're about to get railed by a bunch of old dudes. It looks like I was like yachting, if you will. Oh, like. Yeah. Like or like about like to get elite railed. sugaring, elite sugar right. babying. The guy had like one strand of hair on his head, and I think he was like fifty. And I was like, "Hey!" And you're like, "What up, like, big head?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "This is my man." And he's like, "That's my sugar." Boy. Yeah. <laughs> and the next morning, I was like, "Oh." Next thing so... you know, he's soft and inside you somehow. Ugh, the worst. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, honestly, if they want to hit us up, what up? Should we start filming like this? Yeah. Wait, are, we, are, are we still recording, Brie? Yeah. We should start filming like this. Uh, one microphone. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, hi, hi, my name is Trevi. And I'm Kate. And wait, give me the mic. And welcome back to our podcast. I'm like, no, it's mine. <laughs> I'm six. That would be funny. Okay, we're going to go live, and then we'll be right back with questions. You Imagine guys. if I never talk again. All right, guys, we are going to get into the unnamed segment where you send in your advice and queries or just straight up questions, and we're going to see where that takes us. Kate, take it away. The first one is, if your pet was about to die and had one sentence left, what would be the most unsettling thing they could say? Damn. Okay. Why do you squeal like an anime girl when you get your titties flicked because <laughs> <laughs> he's in the same house as me right so you, your did. your cat watches you like well it doesn't watch i that's audible oh. oh i don't mean to but the my nipples are very sensitive and sometimes right. i'm a very uh, vocal person what do you do when your cat's in the room though i don't let the cat in the room oh, me neither no um, i think he would say like something really unsettling. Yeah. Well, probably that. But he'd also probably say, "You have too much makeup on." <laughs> I mean, but I think the question's like, what's something so unsettling that they, your cat, could say? That's like, you're like, wait, what? I mean, it took him long enough to say all that to me, <laughs> so I guess I'm valid. No. I mean, he has lived with me for a very long time. Okay. It's like all these things that he's witnessed, and he chooses to say. Why do you squeal like an anime girl? Right. I'd be left befuddled. Yeah. Is I'm, that a word? Yeah, it is. It is. I'm thinking like if my cat was like, like you'll never find love. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That, I'm that, always spitting. No, because that one went to Antarctica. It, it did. It went down, guys. Or if he's like, don't look under the bed. Or what if it was like, yeah, I like that one. What if it was like, I know what happened that night. Right. Right. And, and I'm like, I know. It's like levitating. No. <laughs> and then it dies. So. <laughs> it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and then dies. So. Okay. And then I'd be like sitting there like, so. Animated. Do you want to be cremated or do you want to be or put gnaw. into the earth and become a plant or a tree? Uh, so. <laughs> Next question is What are your thoughts on Emma What are your thoughts on MLM and multi level marketing schemes? <laughs> I mean <gasps> Love them. Love <laughs> Have you what? ever been swindled? I feel like my no tea, no shade to my mother. <gasps> but Aww. I feel okay, so like I don't even know and I I can't call her right now because she's sleeping, but my mom has always been in the workout industry. Right. And 
with that, a lot of supplement companies and it's like, this supplement company will send you a bunch of products and be like, if you get your friends to sell and then you friend, your friends can sell and then their friends can sell. And then it's like, she would always come home and growing up with like these new like smoothie powders. She's like, aren't they good? It's 10. She's like, it's 30 salads in one. I don't know why she's like from Canada. (laughs) She's like, it's 30 salads in one smoothie. And I'm sitting there like, Girl, I know it, it right. tastes like fucking garbage. Right. I'm 13 years old. Put some fucking peanut butter and strawberries in a smoothie. I'm running late to school. Actually begging. Yeah. She's like this fucking omega three acid that was extracted God. from a, from a rare plant in South Africa that could only be, you know, yeah. It can only grow if like a certain breed of cow pisses on it. And right. I'm like, like, or oh. you could just get it from eating salmon. Uh, precisely. No. I'm like, what, what What? are all these things happening? So I don't have a personal experience with being a part of one. Yeah. I do know that there was like this big water filter one that was like supposed to be like the the best water filter in the world that oh cl- cuts out 99% of the metals in California water. Yeah. Um, someone tried to swindle me on that. And Did I work? I was like, that's cool. Water tastes good. But it's like, right. I, so I don't know if you're aware of this. I have the Postmates app on my phone. Correct. Yeah, and I don't need to convince anybody that that water isn't going to slap. <sighs> so, really. yeah. What about you? Do you have any personal experience with Yeah, that? it's always the girl that you, like, went to college or high school with that's like, I have this insane business opportunity for you. But girl. this one time I was working as a temp, like, I was a receptionist at a bunch of companies, and... One of them, it was like me and like four other people my age. And one of them was a girl. And one day she was like, yeah, I'm taking business classes. Like I'm making money on the side. And like, honestly, you would be really good at this job. And I was like broke as hell. And I was like, oh my God, tell me more. Right. And, um, It wasn't making any sense. She was like, well, lucrative liquefy liquidate. And you mm-hmm. take, you take, uh, it's in a warehouse and there's some items. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And she was like, just meet with me and my mentor. So I did. And it was this like 40 year old lady. Mm-hmm. And she w- gave me a book and she was like, read it in two days. And then if that means like you're really like in it to win it. And then I'll consider taking you on my team. And so I read the book and then I come back and I meet with her again. And then somehow you it, were in Scientology. Right. It didn't make any sense because she was in the beginning. She was like, this is my full time job. I'm making so much money. And then halfway through, she was like, yeah. So like I still work in consulting on the side and um, all this stuff. And oh. she was like, yeah. And you know what? If you're walking down the street, you can find a client there. My clients are lawyers, doctors, and they're making so much money on the side. And it was just like it like clicked in my head. I was like. Oh, I don't feel safe. And then I remember I went back to work that next day after meeting with her mentor. And they were like, yeah, she tried to get you in the pyramid scheme, didn't she? And I was like, why don't you guys tell me? And they were like, we wanted you to have your own experience. And I was like, okay. Oh but it God. was it was crazy. I was Not like, you being sent to like a warehouse. No, literally. Because they were like, the next step was to go to this business meeting. No. And I was just like. That's the Scientology this, building. No, literally. I was like, this is terrifying. And that girl had to move out of New York because <gasps> she spent all her money on this. On what? On this on like the... pyramid scheme. Because they were like, invest in yourself, buy all these products, and oh. then you can sell them for like double the price or something. And Ooh. it totally fucked her. And now I think she's married though. So, hmm. Hey, at least she found love. Grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was the, honestly probably the best segue. Right? Yeah, ever. Thank I'm you. I'm just feeling grateful. I'm grateful... That we're not losing money in an MLM pyramid scheme. So grateful for that. I'm grateful Leo hasn't told me I wear too much makeup because, first of all, let's clock this. I'm not wearing foundation. I have concealer. You're not? No. Concealer and liquid bronzer. Uh, So Leo better shut that. No. So it's like, what are you referring to, Leonard? So I'm grateful for that. I'm, I'll be grateful when I'm in New York, but right now I'm not grateful that I got to leave in like a few hours. Um, That's crazy. But I'm grateful that, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I'm grateful that what I do for work gets me to see brand new things every single fucking day. So and dope. do new things. I'm very grateful I got to watch you graduate Aww, at your improv class. That was and cute. I had a great time and that pizza was so good. So grateful for my improv graduation. Grateful you guys came. Grateful I have real ass 
best friends. Mm -hmm. And again, grateful. I'm like still putting myself out there with stand up. Again, so humbling, but so fun to see people just so vulnerable on stage. And grateful that literally on the way here, I was like, damn, I really have a podcast with my bestie. That's crazy. Like, I know I say it every week, but like this week kind of hit. Yeah, when we yeah. hit six of ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Our episode not performing the best yet. Yeah, it's the day of. Yeah, so why don't everyone relax? Everyone, um, well, actually, don't yeah, hype uh, it up. Yeah, please comment. Um, if it flopped and this episode is slang, go to the last episode, right. give it a thumbs up and comment because right. we because the it. better we do, the longer this podcast will go on for. As Celine Dion once said, <laughs> "My heart, my podcast my will podcast go on." Will go on. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, we love it. you guys. We love you. And we'll see you next week. And I can't wait to talk about this runway sitch. Me too. Oh, my God. God, I hope I didn't fall. <sighs> okay. See you next week.